The call was three minutes to the mark. Don't just rest and assume that's the way it is. Be prepared, things can change on us today. All right, let's have a, in spite of that little cautious thing, let's go out and win this race. Right. Close the regatta with a win, okay? Yep. Third place, Car Wheel. Second place, Meteor. First place, P2. Yes. Congratulations, you. You did great. Did I? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> this was the first race that I really got to be a part of the crew and uh, the bow team. And um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's um, told me what to do and encouraged me. The overall winner of the 2014 Newport Bucket is P2. The boat, the crew, have fulfilled every dream I had about what kind of boat and what kind of crew I wanted. And so, whatever award we get tonight belongs to you guys, belongs to the crew, not to us.
So what, you might ask, has this got to do with sail making? Well, one clue is that we're in Nevada, birthplace of the American casino, which is also home to a sail making company that 25 years ago took a very big gamble and won. That gamble was to break with tradition. Instead of creating a sail shape by joining shaped panels, the new idea was to build a complete sail on a 3D mould. There were plenty of doubters, and even North had their reservations as to whether this would really be the future. But almost 25 years later, 3D sail making is bigger than ever. Apart from being the world's biggest sail maker, North Sails is famous for its 3DL technology, moulded sails. And that manufacturing plant is here, in Minden, in the desert. But in the last couple of years, the company has moved the game on even further. 3DI is now the sailmaking technology of the future. And this is where it starts. Since it was first announced, 3DI has been causing quite a stir. Not least of all because of how it actually is constructed. It starts off with some tapes. That happens over there in that hall. And that's the bit I'm not allowed to show you. It's that secret. The tapes consist of carbon fibre, aramid and dyneema and the quantities vary depending on the application. For a full-on Grand Prix race boat a lot of it's going to be carbon fibre. For a cruising boat a lot of it may well be dyneema and aramid. But those tapes are made and then stored in a fridge just here. Each sail is constructed by using panels. You might think just like a normal sail, but these are different. These panels are created by laying down tapes by a machine. This sail behind me here is from Melges 32. It's got four panels, bottom, two middle sections and the head section. It's nearly finished and when the machine has finished laying down the final layers, it'll be rolled up onto one of the cardboard tubes you can see on the side over there and then sent over to the moulding shop for the next stage of the operation. Before the sail components can go over to the moulding shop, they've got to make a vacuum bag for it. That vacuum bag has to be the same shape as the sail itself. And so that starts with laser cutting the plastic bag here on this laser plotter. Each of those plastic sections is then assembled here on this bench to make the final vacuum bag for the sail. The 3D moulding process is indeed what North have become most famous for over the last 25 years and I have to say it is pretty impressive. I mean here is an array of all of these jacks, each one individually driven. They're pneumatic drives that drive a little worm drive itself that cranks up each of these legs. Now when the mould is being inflated it's quite remarkable. There's a whole clatter of noises as each one of these jacks talks to another one as it goes up incrementally to create the size. It sounds like it's, a, it's got a life of its own. The individual sail panels are then rolled off their cardboard tubes onto the mould and then taped up around the edges ready for the vacuum bag to go on the top. The plastic vacuum bag is then placed over the top of the laminate. It's then tensioned out with these guy ropes here and then a vacuum applied to actually bed the whole thing down on the mould. Once the sail's snug on the mould, then the cooking process starts with this computer controlled heater that scans the whole surface of the mould. Once the cooking process is finished, the mould is then flattened before the sail is then taken off. The sail is then laid out on this floor where it's left to cure for five days. The last stage of the process 
is the finishing of the sails, where the head and the glue and the batten pockets and all the other bits go on the sail. And at this point, it does actually look like a sail loft, but it's the only bit. So has the gamble been worth it? We'll put it this way. North reckon that 3DL alone put them 25 years ahead of the competition. 3DI has launched them even further than that. Now normally I'd say that that was a ridiculously bold claim to make, but having spent some time here and seen it in detail, I'm not going to disagree. And after all, Nevada is the state of the high rollers. Uh, I was very fortunate to get a, an opportunity. I was uh, given a call and asked if I wanted to be a wild card this week in Chicago Match Cup. And, and monohull match racing isn't something I've done too much of. So for me, it's a huge opportunity. I'm being thrown in the deep end with all the sharks, but uh, I figure that's the best way to learn. So I'm here this week. I'm going to have my fair share of losses, I'm sure, but uh, it's good. I'm going to learn quicker that way. You learn a lot more from your losses than you do from your wins. So I'm very happy to be here. Hey, can't charge it! Yeah, for me, this is one of the areas which I, I'm not strong in. I haven't done the world match racing tour. I came from Olympic classes, finished the Olympics and went straight into multi-hole match racing. And uh, I feel like I'm, I've improved a lot multi-hole match racing. I feel like I'm pretty strong there. But in the monohulls, I haven't done enough. So coming here, uh, yeah, it was something I definitely put my hand up for. Oracle Racing was offered a spot and uh, I basically told Jimmy I'm taking it. And, and I got the boys together and came here. It's, uh, it's definitely a big opportunity for me to come and learn from the best guys in match racing at the moment. Obviously, from the World Match Racing Tour, a lot of the top guys have then gone on to be successful in the America's Cup. You've got Jimmy Spithill, Dean Barker. They're the two big guys at the moment, but pretty much every skipper really has done a lot on the World Match Racing Tour. So it, it might not be totally relevant at the moment, but what it does is it hones in your skills, gives you confidence that you can beat different people. And, uh, and I think when they come into the, the America's Cup scene, they have this air of confidence that they can beat anyone one on one. And I think that's where it's really strong for, for these guys coming from the World Match Racing Tour into the America's Cup. A collision. Oh. What the hell? There is going to be a huge collision here. Uh... Oh, yes, I just ran into the ferry. Real bad. Welcome to the final day of the ISAF Sailing World Championships here in Santander, Spain. Ten days, ten Olympic classes, almost 1,200 competitors from more than 80 nations. It's the biggest sailing event of the year and it's come down to the final four medal races. The top ten in each class racing for glory in front of the grandstand. The women's skiff, the 49er FX, is a new class for the Rio 2016 Olympics. And here at the Worlds, the Brazilian pair of Martin Grail and Cajena Kunsa are poised to give the Samba Nation an early lift if they can overcome the European champions from Denmark, Ida Marie Bard Nielsen and Marie Fuskard Olsen. Of course, we are feeling the pressure, but uh, we're going to do everything we can and hopefully we will win also. Well, beat them today will give us the World Championship, but um, well, let's see what's going to happen. I think we'll make. Uh, a good start, that will be the focus, and then we'll just uh, stay close to the Brazilians. <laughs> we'll have to do a mini match race with her, but uh, I think we are prepared and it will be a really nice regatta. Who's going to take the gold medal? Will it be Denmark? Will it be Brazil? In light winds, the fleet were faced with a technical race. 
but the Brazilians, who needed to finish ahead of the Danes to take gold, were unable to get away well off the start line, leaving Martin and Cahena staring at defeat. But they gradually caught up with their rivals and took the opportunity to split away. With the Danes not covering them, the Brazilians found stronger wind and rounded the top mark well ahead. On the final leg, there was nothing the Danes could do as their Brazilian rivals headed towards the finish line. The Germans won the race narrowly from the Netherlands, but all eyes were on the boat in third position. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so nice. And we're very happy. It's a really nice race, and I don't know, everybody watching us was amazing. As the Brazilian girls hauled the Danes into the harbour, the men's 49er feet was getting set to go. There'd be no world title showdown, as Peter Burling and Blair Tuk had already sealed the gold for New Zealand. But behind them, the Danes had another chance for silver if they could defend their narrow lead over Olympic champions, Australia. Yeah, it's, it's close, uh, obviously with Nathan two points behind, but also the Portuguese are quite close and, uh, and the Austrians, uh, they can reach us as well. So, yeah, it's a little bit too exciting. And away they go. The winds remained very light for the race, but the newly crowned New Zealanders were off into the lead early on. After losing out to Australia's Nathan Outridge at the Olympic Games, the Kiwis were determined to complete the demolition of their rivals and the rest of the fleet with victory on the medal race course. Behind them, the Austrians, who had an outside chance of a medal, were in second. But the medal places would be decided between Australia and Denmark as the two battled for sixth place. And it was the Danes who came through in the end, pushing the Aussies into bronze. Up ahead, though, there was no doubt about the winners. New Zealand taking the gold medal, hugely dominant performance. We wanted to come out and put on a good showing today, and uh, uh, we, we came out firing and yeah, had a, so had a really good race and really enjoyed that last one. The Finns and the Nacras still to race at Santander 2014, but already some very happy sailors in both the 49er classes. We've got water, we've got wind, we've got a sail area. Now all we need is everybody to turn up this morning. What a beautiful morning, fantastic conditions, we're, we're really blessed. What are you guys looking forward to today? Well, we're looking forward to having a go and sailing and participating in and not the Guinness crushing. World Records. And not yeah. crashing. I know Bart will be up there just laughing at himself, stupid about it. <laughs> All these kids look up to uh, people like Bart and uh, will continue to do so. Hi from Santander, we've just bashed it for Bart and uh, it's been a fantastic day, not a lot of breeze and uh, we look forward to uh, finding out who's won. <laughs> it's almost overwhelming the effect it's had around the world. You look at the map that you keep adding the stickers to. Lovely. We're wood on this wonderful Sunday with Vistla! Yeah!